Oh, where's our special guest? The Hot Wheels expert. <laughs> Haven't figured it out yet, have you? Get in. Just look at this place. It's like a childhood dream come true. I thought I'd bring along a few friends who wanted to show off their Hot Wheels inspired cars. So, I've got some fact sheets here. You get to learn along with the audience. I'll just hit the record button and... I've never guessed, Haley. Stick with me, kid. The biggest Hot Wheels expert on Earth is about to take you to school. It all started with Elliot Hansler, who saw the toy cars his son played with and thought to himself, if I could make something better. You see, right from the very beginning, Elliot envisioned a toy car that looked cool and rolled fast, making it that much more fun to play with. At the time, there was nothing out there like that. Handler brought in former rocket engineer Jack Ryan and General Motors car designer Harry Bradley for help. And between them, they made the first 16 cars, known as the original 16. Jack's team developed the stainless steel axles and Delrin hubs that allowed the cars to roll super fast, while Harry made them look super eye-catching. Harry and Jack's contributions became the pillars of Hot Wheels, performance and design. The first car off the production line was a custom Camaro, and not like the one you're driving right now. See what you did there? Yeah! And another of the original 16 was the custom Fleetside, based on Harry's custom Chevy El Camino. Most of those early designs were inspired by hot rods and muscle cars, which were popular in California car culture at the time. After Harry Bradley, more designers joined the team, like Ira Guilford from Chrysler, who did the Twin Mill, and Larry Wood from Ford, who designed the original Bone Shaker. But right from the beginning, they were designing cars to do one thing above all, roll really, really fast on plastic track. You've done your research. Research? I memorized this stuff when I was six years old. One reason why Hot Wheels are so eye-catching is because of a special paint called Spectra Flame. They used a transparent lacquer applied over a polished zinc plating, which gave it a totally awesome metallic effect, just like a real car. Since then, Hot Wheels has broadened and developed its paint technique to support a variety of looks and effects. Fascinating stuff, right? Another detail was a red stripe on the tyres, like the one you're driving now. They called them red line tyres, and they look so cool! Red line tyres are a defining characteristic of this era and are really sought after by collectors. Nice drive. Here, take the Nash Custom 1957, winner of the Legends Tour 2019. Thanks, Hayley. Hey, let's do this again soon. Come on, let's take this monster for a spin. brake horsepower you've got there. As I said, Hot Wheels have always been designed to go really fast on custom track. So, what do you do with the track? Well, you make it in segments that people can build whatever they like. Then you invent a battery-powered booster to shoot cars along the straight and a speed brake to slow them down for tight turns. You can even tune how fast the booster will propel the cars. But why stop there? Loops, jump ramps, Back turns, gravity drops, trestle bridges, chicanes, crossovers, lap counters, multi-lane, side-by-side racing launchers. All fully compatible, of course. That's just good engineering. They even made an auto shop with a working dyno and a teeny tiny oil can and wrench to tune up your cars. I've played with it. It was Nice. So why's the track orange? It's like bright orange. <laughs> Can't argue with that. As you know, nothing is more exciting than seeing cars racing side by side. Hot Wheels made loads of accessories for this, including launchers for the start line, speedometers to clock the speed of passing cars, and finish gantries that can show which car had won. No cheating allowed! In the 70s, there were dedicated multi-lane track pieces, including the Fat Track, which was three lanes wide and had no dividers for a risky overtake. there's even more fun stuff to play with. You've got figure eight, multi-story garages, rubber band kickers, and even giant sharks and dinosaurs that chomp on the track. Why else do you think we've got a giant dragon right here at the park? So, 
why make your cars go really fast on plastic track? I give up. Why? So they go further when they jump off the end, of course. <laughs> Come on, let's go. This is going to be epic. <laughs> I'm riding along with you for this bit. We'll be talking about that one. <laughs> You're probably wondering what all this snake and mongoose talk is about, right? You take the yellow car, I'll take the blue. I'll explain along the way. You've heard of Don Prudhomme and Tom McEwen, right? They were famous NHRA drag racers in the 70s, who had a friendly rivalry going on for years. Uh... Don was a four-time National Hot Rod Association champ and both sports Hall of Famer. He was nicknamed The Snake. And Tom McEwen was another dragster who won the NHRA US Nationals. They called him The Mongoose. They were both well-established racers in their own right. As the two of them competed in the US Nationals over the years, they crossed paths numerous times, which sparked a friendly rivalry between them. Mattel proposed to make a series of toys based on the rivalry between the snake and the mongoose. The Hot Wheels sponsorship led to all kinds of drag-themed stuff. Hot Wheels came out with all kinds of new lines back then, You had sets like the Rod Runner and the Big Belter, which launched cars with rubber bands. The Big Belter could even detect jump starts, which is pretty cool, right? These were a smash hit and propelled both Hot Wheels and drag racing to greater levels of fame. Heavyweights were designed to go faster on gravity drops and Sizzlers had little battery-powered motors so you didn't need a launcher. started drawing six-wheel designs like six-shooter and open fire. Hot Wheels didn't stop there. There were loads of other innovations like tampo printed patterns on the cars, which no one else was doing. Then you had the Hot Wheels Collector's Club Kit where you could mail in to get either the Boss Puff, Heavy Chevy or King Cuda. All with open hoods, big supercharger blowers and silver paint jobs. Oh, so cool. Wish I'd been around back then. You know what? All this talk about drag racing has given me an idea.
coming up on a loop. Keep your car in the middle. That concludes our lesson on centripetal force. Obviously, let you in though. Who else am I going to give the keys to the rip rod? Fair warning, I've got loads to tell you, but I promise it'll be worth it. were known as the Blackwall's era because the previous red line tyres with a red pinstripe were discontinued in 1977. Then there were hot ones with thinner axles, ultra hot, the new wheel design, wheel riders with actual rubber tyres, those are pretty popular. Let me think, you've got crack ups with damage panels, colour shifters that changed in water, oh and you know the blue car blister packs you can recognise from across the store, they started in the 80s too. Mattel bought Tyco Toys in 97, makers of the Matchbox brand of toy cars. This brought all the miniature toy cars under one big roof. for this one. Off-road series 2014, code BD00. One of the new lines Hot Wheels created was called the Treasure Hunt series. Limited production, super collectible. Obviously, we can't go into a toy store or convention floor, so I'll simulate the experience with some treasure chests. Go find that treasure! Collect them all!
be a pearl diver paint edition up for grabs next. See? This is my whole life. like to be a proper Hot Wheels collector. Exhausting, right? Yeah. Worth it, though. I've always had a soft spot for the Bone Shaker. It's like an antique you can drive around in. Let's go. about the Hot Wheels 50th anniversary back in 2018. No, but I have a feeling you're about to. They did a sweet black and gold series with matching livery and a whole collection of other 50th anniversary inspired cars throughout the line. They also started the Hot Wheels Legends Tour. Custom car builders compete to show off their best designs. Then Hot Wheels picks the best one and makes it into a 1 to 64 scale toy. That's how we ended up with the two JFC, Nash Metropolitan and Custom Trans Am. Sometimes the opposite happens, where a toy car gets scaled up into a real one. Hot Wheels have made more than 20 full-scale cars and used them to break three world records with actual corkscrew jumps and double loops. <laughs> it's wild. loads of amazing designers had worked on Hot Wheels. Mark Jones, Phil Wheelman, Brendan Petuski, Fraser Campbell, I could go on and on. Between them, they made loads of creative casting designs. There were lines like the Toon, Hard Nose, Cruise, Fat Back, Torpedoes and the Drop Top series and the Realistic series, if that was your jam. miles above Mexico, but a little Baja expertise won't go astray. The Baja Bone Shaker is a modern take on the classic Bone Shaker design. Hot Wheels have done heaps of cool stuff outside of model cars as well. You mean apart from the Horizon Festival? Exactly! There was an animated movie in 2003, a TV series called Hot Wheels Accelerators in 2005, and tons of video games going all the way back to an 8-bit version in 1984. Oh, those were the days. And get this, back in 2014, they hooked up with the University of Southern California to develop Spodometry, an educational curriculum to teach kids science and maths. Seriously? I know. And there's me, 
stuck in a university lecture on advanced analytics with no toy cars or anything. So unfair. <laughs> this is way better than when I used to build ramps out of books. there's been 20,000 different designs and at least 8 billion cars have been made. Impressive, right? But the rare cars are still worth a lot at auction. An ultra-rare prototype of the 1969 Volkswagen Beach Bomb sold for $72,000 and some collections are estimated to be worth over a million dollars. In the early 2000s, several collector conventions began to spring up around the world where fans could meet up to buy or sell cars, show off their collections, or just talk about their hobby. I figured we could finish the documentary in style with an epic stunt run in this piece. Don't ask how we got it up here. Fun facts have you got on this thing? Can we do epic stunts now and do facts later, please? Couldn't have done it better at 1 to 64 scales. OK, OK, fine. In 2018, Hot Wheels launched its Hot Wheels Monster Trucks toy line and an exciting live event came a year later. This line has both amazing original designs and monster truck versions of classics like the Bone Shaker and Twin Mill. Now this is a Hot Wheels finale. When it comes to trucks and skill chains, bigger is better. It's not the same without the flame. Thanks. Here, have a Mustang.